everybody. Hi. Welcome back to a very delayed episode of Gen X Jukebox. I am your co-host, Darren Grantham. With me is Rob Meyer. How are you doing? Live from Mandan, North Dakota. How are you? Could be better. Could be worse. All right. Yeah. What the I hell have you been doing for the last week? Uh, fuck. What haven't we been doing? Uh, let's see. Pueblo, Colorado had the annual chili and frijoli festival last did week. they have did they have corn and cocktail wieners in it not that type of chili although there was a <laughs> chili contest it's more so for like the uh well pueblo has their own like brand of or chili like green chili like the actual pepper not uh, the, yeah yeah so it's uh this is the time of year where the all the farmers in that region roast the peppers and then sell them by the bushel um but they had a lot of vendor booths and they had a kids magic show that colby thought was the bee's knees cool um i don't know other than that doctor bullshit well colby got glasses and we had had all that kind of fun to get her you gave her your fucking eyesight on top of your looks Hey, I think it's actually my sister's eyesight. I did not get glasses until I was in the eighth grade, but my sister Mindy, who I who we think, I mean, Colby looks a lot like what Mindy did when Mindy was that age. That she got glasses when she was seven. My sister did, and that's the age of Colby is now. So now she gets her first pair of glasses. Um. That's going to be a just, pain in the ass. I can't even imagine having to do that when you're a young tyke. Yeah, I was really hoping that's not the way it was going to work out. But I picked her up from school one day and her acrobatics teacher said, she's been complaining of blurry vision. It's like, eh, all right. So it's like, well, we better get it tested if that's what she says, right? And so it's slight, right? It's just a slight nearsightedness in one eye. And so the... There's not a whole lot of correction in the glasses, but that's where it all starts. The moment yeah. you get glasses, your eyes get really lazy because something else is doing all the work for them. And then sight just goes downhill from there. So, Oh, well, there's worse Hold things. On. Yeah, I totally agree. Could be worse. Okay. Other so the that, kicks final show ever you did listen to it or you have not. I have, I mean, I've, Obviously not the whole thing. I wasn't able to find an entire video, but I'm in a Facebook group um, of individuals who sell like vinyl, uh, cassettes, tapes, whatever, um, you know, a bunch of audio files. And there were a handful of them that actually got to go to the final show because they live in the area and they all posted videos to that Facebook group. Um, so yeah, I've listened to quite a few songs um, from it, but yeah, not the entire concert, but. Well, portion, I managed I to find a really good recording that was done professionally, whether it was by the band or whoever, cause it had, you know, edits and, and camera view switches and stuff, but I didn't watch the whole thing. I skipped through, you know, just to, check out a little of every song you've and, seen them live uh, a couple times within the last year or two so twice within the last two two and a half years yeah and i'll say it's probably a good thing that they're hanging it up because steve unless it was a bad night his voice was hit or miss on a lot he, you could tell he really couldn't get the higher range anymore so and he's a yeah, vocal yeah. instructor in his you know off time, time. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, some of the songs I saw, I thought were pretty good. I mean, for, you know, a person, obviously, you start to lose something like that as you get older. I mean, it's tough to maintain that forever. Um, and some of the songs I thought were pretty good. Obviously, probably not as good as it would have been if you were 20 years younger. Um, but I think there was might have also been an audio issue because i saw in one of the videos that i watched he made a motion to somebody that i'm assuming is a sound tech that he couldn't hear properly and once that change was made 
his audio was better. I mean, what came out of him because at the start of the song, it was pretty bad. And then he, once he, he made went, that motion, it got better. He went through that in Dickinson too. And I actually have that on video. He did all of cold blood, I think. And his in-ear monitors were not working. And he let the audience know afterwards what a bitch it was to try to stay in tune. But then fucking in-ear monitors, I see more and more of that. What is wrong with the old stage monitors? I don't, Bluetooth is not a good technology. I, I just, I mean, it's yeah, spotty at best. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not. But yeah, he suffered. Thing. I mean, because you, I imagine the music's so damn loud. And if you can't hear yourself sing. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's tough to stay in, stay on time, stay in key. I mean, it wasn't a brutal sounding show. No, it's no. just I, I noticed a significant difference from what I saw him two years ago. And I would much prefer to go see a live band do that than them to pipe in audio for him to fucking lip sync to. God, we're just never going to see eye to eye on that. No, I'm I'm OK with little bits and pieces here to, like, boost it. But I don't want to hear complete lips. Complete no, 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 absolutely not. Right? No. No, no, like I said, if there's an area where they know that he struggles and they're going to boost that, I'm okay with it. Yeah. But it's better than a complete Millie Vanilli sellout type job. I don't right? think anybody does that other than your, you know, dancing pop singers who are too winded with their dance routines. I don't know. Who okay, that's a whole different discussion. Yeah. Uh, I, the set list, I got to say, I'm extremely goddamn jealous of because I saw nothing even close to this. And I looked at what, if I would have went to rock timber the date before, and it was even a smaller set than I saw when they were with uh, rat and quiet riot and they were the opener. So they had a really reduced set in rock timber. I think it was like nine songs, which would have really irritated me, <clears throat> but this, I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, when they're doing fireballs, I never thought I would hear that live. I wish I, now I wish I could have been at that final show. I mean, girl money, they skipped that a lot of times. Uh, the yeah. one that I loved to see and hear was to me, the ballad that is a hundred times better than don't close your eyes and tear down the walls. I cannot believe they played tear down the walls. That is just awesome. Um, but I would, I would say that, in a final performance, they wanted to go out. Well, it's their hometown, and it was they're the only band, one right? on the bill. Right. So they can play more. And again, yeah. you're not going to see them again live, um, which totally sucks for me because that's one band I never got to see live. Well, we was, we were going to do it, but Rock Timber. And you were, were going to meet us there, but God yeah. damn it. The prices did not warrant no, for all the it. other. I mean, when you're paying that kind of money for Vixen and Lita Ford and Queensryche without GF Tate and oh, Brett Michaels without, without Poison. Tate? Yeah, he hasn't been in it for years. He's got his own band. No, 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 no. Well, I was going to say, because in that same Facebook group, there's somebody just posted videos of, of Jeff Tate. And so yeah. I don't know if it was with Queensryche or not. Or well, he's got his own band. version of Queensryche. I think it's like gotcha. the whole LA guns thing where there's two versions. Two ver well, apparently yeah. that's all over and done with. I think I thought LA guns is completely back, but yeah. They, so. Well, no, I don't think uh, the guy who, I mean, Tracy guns is back, but the, the guy that actually is as the other band, I don't think we'll ever be back with him. Okay. <clears throat> I forget yeah, his name. Maybe but, I'm thinking yeah. of somebody else that that they had decided to put that to bed and get back. Yeah. Anyway, no, uh, but uh, you know, for that era of music, excuse me, I can't say that Kicks was my favorite band, although I really liked them. But I will, say, but I will say that "Blow My Fuse" is one of my all-time favorite albums of that era. It's good, Far top to bottom. Yeah, top yeah. to bottom. I think it, I wore even that with cassette the overplay out. of of the ballad, right? Don't close your eye, right? Yeah. Is that what it is? I mean, and yeah, and I really don't even even back when it was released, and I was you know listening to it nonstop. I I didn't. I mean, I like "Blow My Fuse" and "Cold Blood," but they're far from the best songs on that 
album. Oh, definitely. I mean, Ring Around Rosie and, oh, and that stuff. I mean, my, I still just, my all time favorite kick song is Rosie. Drop Me probably. the Bomb. I mean, there's so many awesome songs on there. And the oh. ballad's a good song. I just. No, I get it. It was completely overplayed. Like Cinderella's uh, Don't Know What You Got. They're great songs. It's just got enough already, especially when they come out and do Tear Down the Walls on the next album, which is or, way better. Or or that's the only song that people freaking know, right? Yeah. That pisses me off. It's like the whole more than words with extreme. Yeah. Oh, it's fuck that. They go way beyond much more than that, right? And yeah. that's the same thing with Kicks, Cinderella. Uh, I mean, the list can go on and on. Well, it's kind of that was kind of the made their names, but Jesus Christ, their music. Well, and that's kind of the the fault ballads. of the fucking media, whether oh. it's Headbangers Ball or or Hair Nation or any of these. Yeah, even back in the hair metal heyday, all you ever fucking heard were the radio hits. They just right, play right. them to death. And no, 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 yeah, you'd never get a deep cut in some of those songs that were never, you know, released for radio or whatever were far better than any of them that ever yeah. were <clears throat> uh, but no so yeah completely like i said i would have loved to have seen the show i was very jealous of the guys that were able to see it you know from that group um i wish everything would have worked out right with rock timber um to go see them um because that's i don't know like i said i just the lineup I lived killed in it. phoenix i i was always on the you know the lookout for bands that i didn't get a chance to see in their heyday. Um, and Kix was never one of them that I ever saw came through. I'm sure they might have, and I may have missed it, but I mean, if if me and Ray hadn't seen Kix twice in the not so distant past, it probably would have a go. But other than Kix and uh who's the singer of Danger Danger? Ted Poley. Poley. Yeah, that that was it. That's all we gave a shit about. I mean, and then when you're figuring the damn hotels costing three hundred dollars a night and the pit passes, which actually sold out this time and last time, they didn't even come close to that. Those were two hundred and some dollars, and that's a lot of money for two bands who are going to play forty-five minutes. Right? No, I totally get it. Right? I mean, it not to mention the sense. travel. Right. Yeah, like I said, it just didn't work out, and I'll just have to be content with. I hope they do a better job next year for Rock Timber. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. Yeah, hopefully, and you know, yeah, I'll we'll get to some. Yeah, I get it. Okay, there's a lot of bands I wish I could have seen that I never saw before they hung it up, but it is what it is. <clears throat> yeah, um, and I know, you know, we've talked about this in the past about even going to see bands that weren't necessarily top of our A lists or probably even B list, um, but going to see them just because you know there'll never be that chance again, and I. Th pretty right, sure but the price has got to be right they're getting ridiculous no, with this yeah, shit uh, oh totally agree i mean i think we're going to try to see the stones when they come to denver holy christ that's got to be egg. expensive um actually i thought we looked and they weren't horrible i mean they're not going to be good seats but uh what size is the venue i think it's the football stadium oh uh, you're going to be Bronco in the fucking stadium. nosebleeds uh, yeah but it, i'll be able but that's another all-time Huge I know. band that I can cross yeah. off, right? I, I mean, get it. I get it. I'm not a huge Stones fan by any means. I mean, there's a couple of tunes that I think are pretty damn good. The rest of it is, well, not the rest of it, and some of it's, you know, in the middle, and some of it I probably just don't care. Did you just all, hear the but... new one they just put out? Yeah, we talked about that. No, 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 no. Not angry. There's, there's a new one that's out. It's got uh, Lady Gaga singing uh, with him and Stevie Wonder on piano. I don't mind the Stevie Wonder part. And Gaga, I mean... She's only harmonizing. It's not like he's trading uh, lyrics, you know, verses with her. At least not... Okay. Honestly, I didn't even listen to the whole song. I listened like a minute and a half because it sounded, you know, pretty good at the first, you know, few seconds when he started singing with the piano. And then it was like, Jesus fucking Christ, this song's boring. So I kind of just skipped it forward a little bit to hear the Lady Gaga bit. And I heard her harmonizing with the band. And I uh, thought, yeah, it's not my shit, but... No haven't listened but i will as soon as we're done um give it a shot anyway um uh -huh. can't be worse than the europe tune i sent you earlier today i don't know if you i didn't even it. listen to it dude because you're and i will but the band europe has never been anything for me oh, 
Mine either. The I final mean, countdown, be, beyond the intro to final countdown, the song itself did nothing for me. My best memory of that song is when uh, Baglean was in a car full with the rest of us and we're pumping the music up and I had control of the radio. And you know how he always sang, he sang with his hand going and he, I just dropped the volume to nothing right as it says we're heading to Venus. And he was like, sick. <laughs> And the whole car's laughing. He starts oh pounding on me while I'm driving. But other than that, uh, Rock the Night was actually a better song. But I didn't yeah. care for Cherokee and Carrie and all that. I just they just didn't do nothing for me. So yeah, I not again, they weren't on my air B list. They were almost like a like, slightly heavier version of like Glass Tiger for me or yeah. Very survivor or something like that. They just they were well, not a very survivor good rock band. Har had harder tunes, right? I mean, yeah, I just, yeah, I again, but they whatever didn't, they didn't turn my yeah again. How the hell did we get on your oh Europe? You brought that up again. Yeah. The whole yeah yeah. So the Stones, it's a decent tune, but it's it's not something that I would listen to again. It, but they're it, that's the way it is. Most of the Stone stuff I like is in the seventies. Oh. But I'm sure they're still playing it, right? I mean, probably a lot of it. Uh, yeah. And there are, I can't remember the other bands that my wife was listing off not too long ago as the ones coming nearby or through. Well, if shit living where you're living now, you're going to see everything or at least have the yeah, opportunity to. Phoenix had Phoenix had a shitload of bands, too. Uh, I mean, it's not like it was a small small town right it's the fifth largest in the well country. no it's yeah yeah i know i just it just seems like denver with red rocks being right. such a legendary yeah. amphitheater that everybody yeah. wants to play in i mean and i I've, I've never seen a show there i would love to uh way back in junior high my dad did drive us up there so we could see it and it's just gorgeous but i can't even imagine the goddamn traffic jam trying to get out of there at the end of the night though yeah yeah i'm sure it wouldn't be pretty um but that's again there were some i was actually surprised in phoenix that there were some of the large even some of the larger venues that really didn't take that long to get on the interstate um and huh. then zip back home so it wasn't too bad but uh if you were like it's not getting on the interstate it's getting out of the goddamn parking lot <clears throat> Yeah, at least like at the venues, Fargo Dome, Jesus Christ, you might as well just pitch a tent. Yeah, but Fargo's all jacked up. Yeah, has been right. If you have, we a, even struggled getting out of the planning. You don't have that big of an issue, but well, it was a pain in the ass getting out of the Alaris Center in Grand Forks for Grand that Forks. kiss end of the road. Grand that Forks was a goddamn clusterfuck too. And then the the worst thing about it is the fucking cops. Once you got out of there, you could only go one way. It's a fucking two-way street, but for some reason, they wouldn't let you go the way for us that would have made quicker sense to get out of town. We had to go back through the fucking town and around. Well, so at least know. he didn't get pulled over like the night that we left. Uh, God, who was it? It was, uh, oh, we had Melvin's Audi, and we were coming back from Fargo after seeing, was it Firehouse? And uh, why can't I think of the name of? The other band, Mel Melvin's Acura. Acura, yeah. What did I say? Audi, yeah. Acura. Uh, was it Firehouse and uh, Tesla, right? Tesla. There you go. At yep. the yep. Fargo Civic Center. Yeah, and yeah. then on their way home, you were driving the Acura back and got stopped. They said that they were following you forever. It's like bullshit. We would have seen the light. It was pitch yeah. black out. <laughs> and we and nobody was drinking. Nobody was stoned. No, and the cop was just lying out of his ass. I mean, yeah, that, that's the only explanation we would have seen it. Uh, Not the first time. No. All right. Anything else on the kicks show or concept? No, of them I mean, being overall, done? I mean, from what I listened to, you know, I still would have given it a B. I mean, was it the best? No, but I sure would have paid to be there. Right. Oh, I, I mean, would for the set list alone. I wish I could have been there. So, but yeah, it's. It, it's but, another great band that's well, off the off the scene. I mean, it ain't going to be long. I, I No, we're old. Five years, I mean, maybe, before yeah, we're done. Most I, of them. I mean, you'll have maybe like Motley Crue, Metallica hanging around or something. But other than that, I mean, Stephen Piercy's got all kinds of health problems. I know you're not a, you know, a Piercy or Rat fan. And 
warrant isn't warrant. I don't care what anybody says, not without Janie Lane. Right. But some of these uh, same with Skid Row. I mean, with this right. Gronwell guy, or I'm not saying he's bad. I'm just saying some of these that bands. New album's pretty tight. I mean, it's be, it's beyond the voice though. With some, usually that's my big thing when they change singers, the voice is not the same, doesn't sound the same. But a lot of these bands, like I just mentioned, Warrant and Skid Row, they're synonymous with their singer. That's their fame. That's the oh, face of it. So totally now agree. it's just like a whole different band. And the only reason they're holding on to the name is because otherwise they wouldn't get booked in a nightclub. Yeah. You know, I, I can't argue with that. Um, you know, and I, I don't think I had listened to any album without Sebastian Bach or Skid Row up until the brand new one. And the the second guy they had, I can't think of his name. The one I think he passed away. Uh, he was actually with the band longer than Seabass was, and I still didn't listen to any single album that they ever put out. But this they had brand a different singer one, after Seabass. Yeah, because yeah. I know yeah, they had now they're on their fourth one. Because didn't like Mitch Malloy fill, or was that for Great no, White? No, that was for Great White. But uh, okay. uh, so at, so after the second singer, and I can't think of his name because, like I said, I didn't really give a crap about him after Seabass left. Right then they uh, went with Tony Hardell from TNT. Uh, okay. That lasted. That lasted like I think six shows, honestly, and then he was out. And then they got this other guy, uh, the new guy. And the new album is actually very good, in my opinion. Sure. I'm not, I guess I haven't listened to it, but they're uh, actually going to be in town or were not in town, but at the casino. Bedoman. There's a casino within a couple hundred miles that they're going to be at with another oh fucking fuck cherry. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying that uh, the Skid Row album is bad or not. I haven't listened to it. I'm just saying, to me, if that's what's left are these bands without the essence, without the main guy, then we're done. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's the singers who keep fucking dropping like flies or retiring or whatever, and the bands just decide to go on. And I I mean, really, I, I love Britney Fox so much and the band that, that uh, Billy Childs put together at Rock Timber the uh, last year was so fucking good, and I love their songs so much. And I hadn't seen them since their second album, so I love that show. But let's face it, Billy Childs is not Britney Fox. It's it's Dizzy Dean. It's Dizzy fucking uh, Michael Kelly Smith, and maybe even Tommy Paris to some. But Billy Childs just a bass player. Yeah, I, I get mean, it. So so and- your diehards will go. But look at Sweet now continuing on with their second, you know, they got their split variation, the one that seemingly never leaves Europe, which pisses me off with Andy Scott. But now that Priest is gone, what the hell are they doing continuing as Sweet? Yeah. That, that makes no sense to me at all. I mean, there's not a single. So they get booked? I mean. That's just it. That's what, that's what I, I was mean, going back to no. saying, because otherwise they couldn't get a goddamn gig. I get it. No, I and I, I, I won't discount that, right? But I mean. But for I mean, like in the case of Skid Row, you know, Snake has always said, I think it's Snake, Sabo, right? Yeah. Snake or Rachel, that, they're the they're the talking heads. Yeah. Well, but it's always been their band, right? I mean, Sebastian Bach wasn't even their original lead singer. They had for their first album, they had demos with another guy, and then and the demos actually with that guy don't sound bad, but Sebastian just did it better, right? I mean, I get it, but there's not a there's not a that why give up your band? Why give up your name just because the the guy that you think is a douche that sang everything so well, and you can't get along with him? And it it's sounds not like that he's they a very should. hard individual to get along with, anyway, right? But I get it, and well, and, and they shouldn't us. have to give it up. But what I'm saying is they gotta know they're never going to reach that level of fame again. And, yeah. and I'm pretty sure. And, they're okay and when as as anybody they hears skid row, the name in a conversation, they don't think stupid. snake. They don't nope. think Rachel. They think nope. Sebastian Bach. I agree. And that's gotta be goddamn but, hard to live with. If I started a band, me and you started a band and we became ultra successful. And the lead singer who was just a guy we added at the last minute David became Bagley. the face of the fucking band. That would kind of bother me a little bit. Yeah, 
but I mean, for the most part, I mean, it's the lead singer and the lead guitarist that are going to get most of the attention. It's rarely the drummer or the bass player. And I would even say it's probably 60, 40, 75, 25, that the lead singer is still usually the face of the band. I mean, and but that's what usually draws people in, right? I mean, I, but you got to do a better which... job with a replacement because there have been success stories. Brittany Fox with Tommy Paris goes yeah. out and has a huge cult following. That third album is probably better than either of the ones Dizzy did. I mean, there are exceptions to the rule where a new singer came in and made it his own. This guy is just a fucking wannabe talent show guy who right. is a but, sub Skid Row tribute singer. And I wish I could remember which article it was that I was reading recently and about which band and who fucking said it. But it was the essence was it's like anybody can play his any good could good guitarist could play his part, but nobody's going to be able to sing it like that guy. Right. Yeah. And that's and most bands are, are going to have that issue. I mean, one of so the then get another larger than life in history singer. again is like Van Halen. Right. I mean, with whether i mean because the camp is usually pretty split on whether there are it's van halen or van hagar right i mean which one well it's because they went to jet two drastically different directions van halen was a rock band van hagar was a pop band i agree but <laughs> again but that's one area where the band actually was more successful financially with the second singer than they okay were but they the also first, bring right? in a second singer with a huge catalog and successful name right right no i totally agree yeah and that's just that, where i think if skid roll or any of these bands wants to continue without their singer and i'm not knocking gronwell i think is his name i'm just saying you need to have another larger than life personality doesn't necessarily have to be previously famous but he's got to stand out. He's got to become the face of that band. And and this guy just doesn't. But I guess yeah. that's just my opinion. I just, I'm still the school of rarity that thinks that music is every bit about the image as it is the music. And this guy comes out with short, spiky hair and, and tries to fit in with Skid Row. It just doesn't work for me. Why are you leaving me with dead air while you're staring at Sorry, something? I'm looking up the new fucking singer. I think it's Eric Gronwell or something like that. Getting such a goddamn glare off of your forehead that I can't. Of course, I, I Google Skid Row lead singer, and then it it still pops up the very first hit of Sebastian Box. Well, it's always going to pop up Sebastian Box. That's all anybody cares about. This further, further proves my point. That's all Google cares about. <laughs> and I hate Sebastian. All right, yeah, Eric Gronwall is that's what the I current thought. lead singer, but that's not the guy. It's not the guy that they, Johnny that died? Solinger. Johnny oh. Solinger was their lead singer from 99 to 2015. He died in 2021. So he left when he got, I think he left because he was sick and then he ended up dying. Right. And then. And then you had Tony Harnell took over in 2015. And I did see them in Phoenix with Tony. I think it was like his second or third show. And like, I sort of got a week or two later, it was all over with. I mean, it was very, very brief. That's a mystery because his voice doesn't really fit that music. Actually, no. Gronwell. Where is it? Because it, no. Okay, get that. Scroll back up. No, 2022 to present, Gronwell. But before that, they had ZP Thert, T H E R T, from 2016 to 2022. So after Harnell left or got booted, whatever it was, then this ZP Thert took over for six years. And now it's Gronwell. And that's who they put out that new album with. But and, and uh, through all those singers and all these years, all anybody remembers is I will remember you 18 in life, youth gone wild. <clears throat> they only remember the Sebastian stuff yeah. because all of these bands that insist on carrying on without the singer can't even put out music that sells. Yeah. I have no idea how, how well or how poor the new album is. Right. And honestly, I didn't give it a listen until, uh, you know, it's probably two or three weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer, but it couldn't be much. I get a text from, 
a friend that I used to work with in Phoenix. He's now out in PA and I'm here in Colorado. He goes, Hey, have you listened to the newest Skid Row? It's pretty good. And it's like, no, because I haven't given two squirts since Sebastian left. And the only reason why I saw him with, with Tony is because I'd never seen Tony live, right? I'd, being a huge TNT fan, I always wanted to see Tony Harnell live. That was my only chance. I mean, he didn't sing. Obviously, they didn't sing a, any TNT tunes, which is, you know, to be expected when you go see Skid Row. But it was an honor to see Tony sing. Um Otherwise, I wouldn't have went if it was still Solinger or anybody else. I probably wouldn't have gone. But if I lived in North Dakota, I would probably go wherever they were, where you say within a couple hundred miles. I'd probably go because the album is good. I, I thought it was really good, actually. I, I didn't think there was a crappy song in the whole thing. Well, Ray likes him, too. But the, the, the deal breaker is, A, we got Vegas around the corner, and that's like the weekend before we leave. So maybe it's this weekend or last weekend. I don't know. But second, he hates Buck Cherry as much as I do. Yeah, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't necessarily go and, and see that. I mean, who opens? I mean, if it's Skid Row opening. No, it's Buck or, Cherry opening. Yeah, if you got assigned seating, I would just wait until Buck Cherry <laughs> left the stage, honestly. <laughs> That's I what mean, he does. Done, he sits in the I've casino and waits. i before, right? Yeah. I mean, I've. Well, I did reverse. I went to Four Bears for L.A. Guns opening for Vince Neal. I watched L.A. Guns and walked the fuck out to the casino to gamble the rest of the night. <laughs> oh, I would, too. I, oh, <clears throat> Yeah, I, your ears would bleed if you had to listen to Oh, I tried. I, the first song, and I was going to, I gave it the first song only because I saw Dana Strum. And at the time, I didn't know he was, a, you know, one of the Vince Neal band guys. I was like, holy shit, that's Dana Strum. But halfway through that song, yeah, I was can't like, make Jesus. Up, you can't make up for, no. <laughs> for your no. crappy Vince The Neal sound was so horrific to the fucking ears coming out of his fucking microphone that I just left. I, 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 first of all, I don't like Motley Crue music to begin with, but he makes it even worse live. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of theirs, but at least Studio Vince is a thousand times better than live Vince. Right? Well, same I with mean, Axl Rose and a lot, lot of these guys okay. just, they they can be passable in the studio, but when you get them in live, it's like Jesus. Even Brett yeah, Michaels, some of them, and how how easy is Poison? See, right? Well, um, yeah, but how easy is Poison music to sing? He's got no range. He's got no rasp. That fucker can't complete a sentence on stage to save his life. If he stopped jumping up and down like some idiot at a rave, he might be able to actually sing every word without getting winded. It's just brutal. Yeah, I don't think Vince has ever had a good live performance. I mean, it's. Complete studios magic, as far as I'm concerned. Everything I've seen, even going way back to some of their first shit from like the whiskey and stuff like that, horrible, absolutely horrible. I have no idea how they ever became popular before they even recorded a goddamn album. Well, most I mean, people that go to these shows, especially like, where they're exploding at on the you know the whiskey and shit like that, people are so fucking drunk they don't know what the fuck's going well, on anyway. It, it has to be right. Uh, Cause I think back to when you and I first started going to clubs um, for live music, local, the biggest band around was Zorte sucked. Yeah. They absolutely sucked. But everybody's like, Oh, you gotta go. You gotta go see Zorte, the best live show in town, best live show. But that, no, I mean, no. even Mata crappy. I mean, Mata Hari had a better <laughs> live show than Zwarte. Hey, hey, I mean, fucking, and I uh, couldn't stand Mata Hari, but. O o Oban's band was uh, better than Zwarte. In Crap Nito? I mean, in. Yeah, in Crap Nito, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I saw them way back at the night scene, which was oh, like a teen 18, club. Teen yeah. club? Yeah. <laughs> I think they performed. They may have even won the first annual Battle of the Bands, but there was never a second because I think once they heard. It's Bismarck, North oh, Dakota. Man. I know, but you got three guys who rehearse in a garage for a week and call it a band. I mean, there's not talent around here to compete with, so that's not much of a trophy. There were some good <laughs> musicians in some of those bands. I sure mean, there were, but uh, I mean, oh. uh, yeah, we've had that conversation before. There's a stark difference between local talent, national talent, and yeah, like even oh. Happy from um, K. Uh, UKI. 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 Thank you. Yeah. He's in yeah. what I mean, hairball now. He was now. talented, but I mean, not, I, not at that know, level. Yeah. But he, uh, he auditioned for Ozzy and lost, right? No, actually, I mean, he missed. Did he miss it? His plane was uh, delayed or whatever. He missed it. At least that's what he told us at Eddie's club that night. 
uh, I was probably six pitchers in and don't recall that conversation. Probably. Yeah. Well, we're 36 yeah. minutes into a kicks video. That's been about skid row and, uh, yeah, local but band. you know, it got us, it, it <laughs> gave us a purpose to get on. Right. It I did. Mean, it did. Um, and it was long overdue. I have to admit, I I'm hoping, hoping things calm down here. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's going to snow soon. I mean, I could feel it near man. And I'm excited. I not. I know you're not. Go back to the fucking desert, bitch. Enjoy that yeah, fucking like electric that. bill through their fucking roof. <clears throat> you know, it's actually very comparable here, right? I mean, doing the, once I got on like, on like that balanced billing crap in Phoenix, I was paying like a little over 200 a month most of the time for. Yeah, but didn't you say you had to have a certain plan to where you could only run at certain times a day and shit like that? Um, from three to six, they didn't See, want you to that. have your, no, mine's on nonstop at 63 degrees. Be, they didn't want it to be below 78. Like, I, I, I actually have acclimated it. to that where it wasn't a person could actually deal with it. It wasn't that bad, but here, I mean, one, the biggest difference is, is that everything is rolled into one except for trash, right? So your gas, electric and water all comes from the same company. Whereas in Arizona, that was different, right? A little bit different. And here it's gas and electric water, right, separate, but water, separate trash, yeah. usually like water and trash are together in, in North Dakota. Right. So here it's all one, it's all one utility company for that. And the bill is about what I was paying in Arizona, um, for both water. What's your gas electric. right now per gallon down there? Uh, honestly, you know, driving a Prius, when I fill up, it's, it's never the same. Uh, no, I, I'm just saying price wise. I, gap per yeah, gallon. I don't know. Uh, Cause it's been a while since I had to fill. Cause I we're mean, at for the, for the ultimate cheap shit. That's got that corn methanol or ethanol in it. Ethanol. It's like five bucks a goddamn gallon or four bucks a gallon. I mean, price of gas per gallon. 380. Three six Amber says three sixty right now for, for the gallon. cheapest. Yeah, for the here it would be eighty five octane. Yeah. All right, we got about uh, two minutes left, so um, I'll no, be in you, Vegas for a for week Vegas? Uh, Monday. Well, we're gonna fly out of Fargo because Ray's buddy couldn't get Sunday off, so we'll leave here about five in the morning, drive to Fargo, eat shop a little bit and fly out at one o'clock so we'll be in vegas vegas time probably around two three o'clock okay and we'll come back friday <clears throat> all right so well i will I'll uh, try to think of some we other might go to the hard topic. rock for that rating the rock vault and if we do i'll put some shorts up of that but all right all right until next have, time have fun take her easy later <laughs>